will be hosting the Next Wave Crypto Fortunes event. And you can sign up for this for free. The link is in the email. I'm going to talk about why I am so bullish on the cryptocurrency markets and what specific types of cryptocurrencies outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum that I'm looking at. So please join, sign up, uh, put your email in there, and we will notify you when the event is live and also give you a chance to watch the replay. Because many of you have written in about our new position in Ethereum from our newsletter last month and had some questions about it and whether you should invest in the Grayscale Ethereum Trust or Ethereum. And I'm going to go over those charts and some of those questions in a minute. But I want to talk about a question I got yesterday from a colleague who called me and said, why is blockchain so important? What is the 30-second elevator pitch? Well, I don't have a 30-second elevator pitch, but I can tell you in a couple of minutes why I think blockchain is so important and why I think the next decade, cryptocurrency is going to be the place where you want to invest. Now, indulge me for a minute. Let's think back 40, 50 years ago. Some of you can remember what life was back then. And just think about what we're going through right now with this information revolution, okay? And if you really think about this, every 10 years, there has been a big change in this information revolution, the technology has involved. And specifically, it's the way that we communicate and exchange things uh, over computers and over technology. So starting in the 1970s, you had the advent of the mainframe computer. And these were gigantic computers that took up an entire room. They were very costly. They cost about $3 million in today's dollars. And compared to what we have now, the technology was irrelevant. I mean, a computer that landed the Apollo 9 mission on the moon is one 100 millionth times slower than the iPhone that's in your pocket. So this iPhone right here is 100 million times faster than the computer that landed Apollo 9 on the moon. And in the 1980s, chips got smaller, they got faster. So we started to see PCs, personal computers roll out and households around America started buying these PCs. I remember I had an Apple IIc and I think I had a Commodore 64 once too when I was a kid. And in the 90s, the next evolution was the internet. So now that everyone had a PC in their house, they were able to connect over the internet, which allowed you to transfer something digital from one computer to another. You could finally share things over a common network. In the 2000s is when social media was invented. So we had all these connected computers. Then we started to organize these connected computers into groups. Like if you look at Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat, some of you, or maybe even some of the younger ones are on TikTok now. And this social media was a way that we started organizing the internet into communities. Now, 2010s was the beginning of cryptocurrency. And just like the 2000s was the beginning of social media, we didn't really see the social media boom till 2010 when all these social media type stocks took off. Like if you look at the price of Facebook in the last 10 years or, or Amazon, I would throw into the social media e-commerce angle. 2020 is going to be big for cryptocurrency because it's finally starting to go mainstream. So we had this big hype cycle where we had a mania in 2017. The price of Bitcoin went from 1000 to 20000 And then we had the bear market, similar to what we saw in dot-com. And now we're starting to see real-world adoption. There was news from Visa last week that they're going to start using a US-pegged stablecoin, which is a cryptocurrency in their network. So they're going to allow 60 million of their merchants to start accepting something that is a cryptocurrency based on the Ethereum blockchain. So that's huge news. But why is blockchain important? Now that you know the evolution of it, let me explain to you. Well, digital things can be duplicated. And if you think back to the beginning of the internet, when there were these file sharing sites and for instance, LimeWire or Kazaa.com were these websites where one person could upload an album, okay, or a bunch of songs, and the rest of the internet could download them for free. And at the time, the music industry was terrified because they were worried that their music business would be obsolete because if one person had the album and then 100 million people had access to it. So they started all these copyright lawsuits and these sites got shut down. And now you wind up with gatekeepers in this business. And the gatekeepers now are Apple and Spotify. And you might probably own either of these stocks in your account. 
And these gatekeepers ensure that the musicians that are creating the music receive some compensation for allowing people to download their digital music, okay? Because everything that can be put online can be duplicated a million times. Another case in point, take out your iPhone, right? And let's say you snap a photo of your dog and you've got this photo of your dog and you send your photo of your dog to 10 friends. Now, 10 other people have the same exact photo of your dog. How do we prove that that photo is one you took and it's your dog when there's 11 copies of it out there? We can't right now unless we can look at your email history or your text message history and see that you are the person that sent this. This is what cryptocurrency enables. It allows two people with no prior history of one another to share something or send something of digital value and leave a record of it. So it creates a decentralized ledger and we know where that digital image originated and we know who has access to that digital image. So it assigns something of value to something that is created digitally. And that's all Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is not a physical, tangible thing. It's just a, a digital message. A Bitcoin is basically, uh, you know, you're, you're telling someone if you have a Bitcoin, then you have something that's worth $18,000 or $19,000 in value now. It's just a message. And cryptocurrency and blockchain are going to reinvent the way all messaging is done on the internet. And this includes all the data that we are currently producing now on a daily basis. You don't realize how much data that you as a human being with a mobile phone and a computer are producing every day. Your internet search history, the places you go, the text message you send, the emails that you send, everything is a piece of data that a large centralized organization has access to and power over and uses to monopolize the things that they want you to see. And obviously, there's a, a lot of stuff going on right now with social media and the president and Congress. So we'll see how things play out. But the future really is users are going to take back power over our private data. And we're going to do this because we can prove ownership using the blockchain. So you're going to see instead of applications that you use now, like Facebook and Twitter, there's going to be a rise in these decentralized applications that allow you to opt in with your information. So if I want to share a photo with my social media group, and it's not going to be Facebook, but it would be something else, I would allow that photo to be shared. But then when I want to stop sharing it, I can easily take it back and we'll see these you know, built-ins that are happening uh, for the web. So I'm going to talk more about this in next week's special event. You can sign up in the email and check it out. Hope to see you there. Okay, so let's get into the automatic fortunes portfolio because I know there's been a lot of stocks moving this week. And as I said last week, you know, we are we got through the chop. We started kind of this grind higher in the smoother waters. Today has not been that smooth. We had a very strong market on the open and then we started to sell off. But one day does not make a difference. Let's take a look at some charts and then I'm going to get to a couple of your mailbag questions after that. So the first chart I want to talk about is the spies. And like I said, remember last week we were heading to smoother waters. So we had about six up days in a row. And then today we've got a little bit of a reversal day. I'm not that concerned. If we do pull back, I think we're going to head back to this 20 day moving average here, the blue line, which is also support from where the breakout was. So it would be healthy to have a little bit of a pullback. I mean, if you look at this chart, we have gone from 323 in the spies in early November all the way up to 370. So you're looking at over a, a 10 or 12% move just in a little over a month. A pullback is healthy, a little bit of consolidation, but I still think uh, the market is primed for higher prices. Let's talk a little about Ethereum because recently Ethereum has been kind of going sideways right now. And here's a daily chart of Ethereum. So it did break out all the way up to 625 and then it's sort of consolidated a bit. The big news in Ethereum was that they launched the beacon chain recently, which is the new version of Ethereum. And it's gonna allow for scaling up of the technology, which means it's gonna make it a lot faster. And it's very exciting. It's been in the works for years now. 
I, this is how crypto trades, though. I mean, it's a very volatile asset. And if you go back to 2017, when Bitcoin went up 2,000%, there were also seven pullbacks of 20% or more. So if you're thinking about buying Ethereum, and I know some of you are very interested in it, tread carefully. Only invest what you are willing to lose 20 or 30% in a couple of days. And I would also recommend that, let's say you have a set dollar amount you want to invest in it, just start with 20 or 30%. You don't have to go all in at once, especially in these markets right now where they're very volatile. You know, they go up for a couple of days and they go down very quickly. So just be really careful there entering this market. It is extremely volatile. And I think the best way to invest in cryptocurrencies, and I've been saying this for a couple of years, is dollar cost averaging. So basically, my bet is that this space is going to be significantly higher in 10 years. And the way that I want to express that investment is I want to allocate a little bit every month to this sector. So whether it be 100 or 200 or $500 a month, whatever you, know, you choose to put in there, you would invest. And if it has a big month where Ethereum is up a lot, maybe you scale back that investment a little bit that month. If it goes down, you step up that investment. So this guarantees that when the price is pulling back, you're adding more than when the price is going up. And I think that is an easier, less risky way and will allow you not to get shaken out as quickly. The worst thing that can ever happen in the tech as a tech investor, when you're investing in growth, is you get the shakeout. When the market drops 20 or 30 percent, and just shakes out all what my colleague Paul calls weak hands. Don't be a weak hand. You can be a strong hand by just lifting lighter weights, right? Instead of lifting 30-pound weights, just lift five-pound weights, and it'll help you hold on to these positions for longer. Let's take a look at the ETH Grayscale Trust. And this one is the publicly traded exchange-traded note that tracks the price of Ethereum. And some of you have bought this as well. This is ETHE. I don't know why it says ETH here, but the ticker symbol is ETHE. This is the publicly traded one. So this is the one you can put in your retirement accounts. And I said when I issued the trade, because I know some of you have written in about this, that I'd rather buy ETH because of the premium in ETH. Well, you know, the premium can cut both ways. At the time, I think the premium uh, for ETHE was at like 40 or 50 percent it's gone up to about 100%, okay? So if you bought ETH over the last month, you're sitting pretty. We did this trade alert in the early 50s. It traded as high as 136 recently. Now, don't chase this. If the premium is this high, wait for it to come in a little bit. And it's starting to roll over a little bit while the underlying ETH, Ethereum, is going sideways. I hope I'm not confusing you. So what I'm saying here is that the premium expanded in the exchange traded note. And if you had bought the exchange traded note over the last couple of weeks, you did better than buying the underlying. Over the longer term though, I believe this premium is going to converge closer to where ETH is. One of the reasons why this thing is so, let's say jacked up right now is because there's a lot of demand coming into the sector and there is not enough product to meet that demand. So the Grayscale Ethereum Trust is a very liquid instrument. They only have a limited amount of uh, exchange traded notes out there. It's not a stock. And because of that, when people really want it, they'll pay anything. And that's what we saw in the last week. And I wouldn't be surprised if this ETHE underlying comes back to about 100, even if the underlying Ethereum stays flat. So you might look at a 16 or 20% drop in the grayscale Ethereum trust while the underlying remains flat. Let's take a look at Zillow. And I don't know why this keeps popping up on my screen. Okay, go away. All right. So Zillow is a name that we've owned since I think $40 a share. It hit $125 today and has broken out to a new 52-week high. The news in Zillow is it's not just the platform where they're marketing and helping real estate brokers market houses. The X factor in this company, which I believe is going to play out this year, is their iBuying division. And what it means is that Zillow will make a cash offer on your house in 24 hours. And there's a couple other companies that do this, but I think Zillow is doing it the best because they have the most data and they can give the most accurate price for a house. So 
you know, let's say for one reason or another, you have to move immediately and you don't want to deal with cleaning up your house or uh, painting the walls or doing the landscaping. You email Zillow and you say, I want an offer. Within 24 hours, they give you a cash offer and then they can close in just a couple of weeks and move out of your house. Hopefully you'll have something else lined up or you'll be homeless. And the reason why I think this business is incredible right now is because there's just going to be so much turnover in the home owning market over the next couple of years. We have this huge shift where millennials are moving out of the cities. And this has been accelerated because of coronavirus. Remember, everybody wants to get the hell out of the city. All my friends are moving out of New York. Everybody else is moving out of San Francisco. And they're moving to, to lower tax states like Texas and Florida and Utah, Colorado. And it, this is great for Zillow's business because they are going to make money on buying these houses quickly renovating them and flipping them to a higher buyer. So the most money that Zillow is going to generate, the most revenues in the next couple of years is not going to come from the platform. It's going to come from their eye buying division. And that's why I'm still bullish on the stock. Okay, let's talk about Uber because Uber did something this week that some people said, I can't believe they did this, but they sold their self-driving unit. Remember, self-driving Uber was one of the reasons, was my X factor for the stock, one of the reasons why I think that it was going to triple from the $30 valuation. And this is good news for Uber, actually, because this Uber ATG unit has been kind of underperforming. They haven't kept up with the Waymos and Tesla, but who knows how far ahead Tesla is, and GM Cruises of the world. And so they're basically consolidating their Uber ATG unit with a self-driving startup called Aurora. What's interesting is not Uber is not backing away. A lot of people say Uber is getting out of self-driving cars. They still have a 26% stake in the combined company. So if Aurora gets to the point where they're able to make level five or level six cars, they already have this network of uh, demand and supply with Uber that they can immediately commercialize their robo taxi fleet. So it's good that Uber is getting out of the Uber ATG. And it's also positive they're sticking with self-driving cars. I would be worried if they were getting out of self-driving cars altogether, because I think that whoever can build the robo taxi fleet the fastest is going to take a dominant position in self-driving uh, cars in the future, which is it's like a $7 trillion market if you look at uh, the entire mobility space that's going to be revolutionized by these autonomous vehicles. Now, taking a look at Uber stock, I want to note something this today because we had a big IPO and that was DoorDash. So Uber stock broke out to a new high today, it hit 56. And we haven't seen a price like this since Ooh, even before its IPO. So Uber is higher than its IPO price. I didn't realize that. But DoorDash went public today. And DoorDash is a company here. You can see it trading one day, but I'll do the five-minute chart. So DoorDash is a company that does food delivery. And they were started like seven years ago. And the company is worth over $60 billion now. And it went public at $102 a share and then open at $180. This is not, nothing traded at this price, unless this was a sale, but it opened at 180 and then hit 195. So if you were able to buy the IPO, like institutions were, or hedge funds, you're sitting on like a 75% gain today. However, most people in the retail space only get the first trade, which happened up here at 180. Now, why is this interesting? Because Uber has Uber Eats, which is a competitive business with DoorDash, okay? And DoorDash's uh, market value right now is worth $55 billion, okay? So that values their business at about 20 times sales. If we were to look at Uber Eats as a standalone business, it is worth, oh, it's on this chart. Uber Eats is worth, is about 25% of Uber, as a standalone business, it's worth about $90 billion. And if you look at the market cap of Uber, Uber's market cap right now is 94. So you can back out all the taxi stuff on Uber. And if you keep the multiple that DoorDash is trading at, then all of Uber technologies could be Uber Eats. And they're growing basically the same to your growth rate as DoorDash DoorDash has a little bit higher margins and is a little bit more profitable, but it's really interesting to think about that Uber could be significantly undervalued. Now, I think DoorDash is significantly overvalued currently because of this, 
Not that Uber is significantly undervalued, but just goes to show, if you're thinking about buying DoorDash, don't do it. Go and buy some more Uber because the valuation on Uber Eats is a lot less than what investors are currently paying for the DoorDash IPO. Now, there's another IPO coming this week, and one of you wrote in about it. I just want to address this question really quick from Nikhil. He said, I want to get your thoughts on a high-profile IPO stock, not in your portfolio, Airbnb. There might be a frenzy buying on the IPO. I would stay away. So Airbnb is coming at some point this week. It's going to price, and then it's going to open up like 50 or 70% higher. A lot of people are going to buy that on that opening print, and they're probably going to get burned. It is a very difficult thing to trade. You want to wait till, I think Airbnb is going to be great company for the next 10 years, but you probably want to wait till the dust settles after that IPO price. So that is what I'm going to say about Airbnb. If you can get it, if you're an institution or you have some type of uh, way of getting it on the IPO price, you probably will wind up like what they did with DoorDash, where you got DoorDash at 102 and then it traded 175. But more likely than not, the average uh, investor does not get that type of price. So let's talk about Splunk. Splunk, as I noted last week, missed earnings estimate. And this thing is kind of on a little island by itself. We are still above where we issued the bonus stock pick. I know some of you have bought higher. This is unfortunate. I don't like losses. We don't have many in our portfolio, thankfully, this year. Um, I'm still watching the stock. There has been some constructive talk on uh, in in Wall Street research this week, but you know they really missed. They bombed this quarter. So this might be one that that we have to let go. I want to see how this kind of does after this consolidation right now. So Splunk is definitely on my radar, and I'm going to keep you updated on what to do with this stock. And lastly, our most recent newsletter, Mass Tech, is starting to break out right now. I still really like this trade. It is a way to play on the big infrastructure build that I think that's happening next year. And it's also a play on 5G because they work with the telecom companies to build out this 5G network. Oh, by the way, like 5G is not done yet. It's going to take a decade to complete. I mean, they're still installing 4G towers places. So 5G, which requires more equipment, is going to take longer than 4G. And the reason for that is it's very easy to get all the cities done early. And that's where most of the 5G build out occurred. But you have to think, this country is huge. And think of all these dead spots when you drive around that you have no cell coverage as well. You're eventually going to have to get something, either 4G or 5G service. And mass tech is uh, a big player in that industry, as well as the renewable industry. So we're going to start adding more solar and wind farms over the next couple of decades. And mass tech is a construction engineering firm that's going to be winning those contracts. So that's it for this week's webinar. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Remember, check out the next wave crypto fortunes webinar next week. You can sign up by putting in your email in the link in the email that I sent you. Have a great week, everyone, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.